Hi, welcome to another TFT Hyper Roll video from Mission for Tuition. It's called Mission for Tuition because we are trying to pay for our son's middle and high school tuition. He needs to go to a special school that's frightfully expensive. We don't take donations or anything like that. So if you could just put a like on the video, it will help with the YouTube algorithm. It'll get out to more people, get more views, make more money, etc., etc., etc. This video is going to be five more builds I think you should know to help in your climb to hyper. These builds all have a common theme that you'll figure out as we go along, but they encompass the core of TFT, which is tanky frontline, strong backline. And we're gonna begin with one I like to call Sir Jax the Ironclad. The base elements of this build are pretty simple. By level seven or eight, you want to have four knights, three ironclad and three skirmishers. Your knights are going to be holding your front line along with your ironclad and almost all of your damage is going to be coming from Jax who serves as your backliner. This build is actually easy to force and pivot into. You can start off by grabbing a skirmisher with one of your critical items on it or you can do the exact same thing with a knight. You just want to get the tanky item on the tanky knight or the damage item on the skirmisher. Now what is really nice in this build is that you have a lot of one and two cost champions that can serve as item holders for the people you're going to bring in later on. For example, in this game, we see Leona with a Sunfire Cape, which is an excellent item for a knight, and Udyr with a Bloodthirster, which is an excellent Jax item. Since this build is going to revolve around Jax, you want to have a one cost skirmisher holding on to them. Leona may stay in the game or may go out of the game for a higher cost knight, depending on how things go throughout the game and how many Leonas you get. Now in a normal skirmisher build, I recommend the Bloodthirster, Runin's Hurricane, and the Rapid Fire Cannon as the three Jax items. And that's to allow him time to power up without taking any damage. However, you get a little bit more flexibility in the Sir Jax the Ironclad build because he becomes so tanky due to the Ironclad and Knight buffs. The only required item is the Runin's Hurricane, and that's because Jax is your damage dealer, period. So you want him hitting multiple targets. After that, you just want to get a healing item, whether it be Fist of Fairness, Hand of Justice, Bloodthirster, etc., and then a damage item like Deathblade, Infinity Edge, or something like that. For your rolling strategy, it works a lot like the Skirmisher build. You want to hold on to your gold until level 7 and then roll down and find the champions you need. Here's where you can find Galio, you can find Rel, and obviously Jax. You get a 15% chance at level 7, so it's the time you want to roll down, find everything you need to fill in. You may lose a little bit before then because your team won't be as strong, but it will make up for it once you hit 7 and are able to fill in all those missing pieces. For positioning, it'll depend a little bit on your items. If you have a rapid fire cannon on Jax, you'll put him behind a front line of tanks. Otherwise, he can go right in the front. He should be tanky enough to hold on and keep going. Give this build a shot if you're looking for an easy build to use to climb, but a lot of the higher level champs are contested, so it doesn't always lead to victories. And with that, let's move on to build number two, Night Ranger. Okay, okay, a little silliness, but yeah, that is actually a real band, and they're actually pretty good. But Night Ranger is exactly what it sounds like. By level 8, you want 4 Knights and 4 Rangers, so you're taking full advantage of both buffs. Your Knights are going to be blocking as much damage as possible, and your Rangers are going to be getting the maximum attack speed that you can have with 4 Rangers, unless you happen to get lucky, get a ton of traits, and get additional Rangers. You can try and force this build by picking up a ranger with a damage item or a knight with a tank item. That will get you started. But I strongly, strongly suggest to wait for a sign from the RNG gods such as an early three cost ranger and items that will fit. Personally, if I can get a sunfire cape onto one of my knights, that is my preference. But if you get damage items like Deathblade and Bloodthirster, Definitely put them on and go for it. In a perfect world, I want to get those items onto a two-star Aphelios, Rageblade, Bloodthirster, and Deathblade. Aphelios will do a ton of damage, especially with his ult when he's able to hit multiple targets. 
You don't absolutely have to rely on Aphelios. Action also makes an excellent carry if you get him later in the game, or if you happen to get a three-star Vayne, she will do a fantastic job with the right items. If you're going that direction, look for Rageblade and Runin's Hurricane to put on Vayne. Varus can also work in this build because Varus's ult will go over your knights, which is an excellent place for it to be since it's going to empower everyone in the circle. This is an excellent boost when you're running knights because not only are they hard to get through, now they're also going to do a lot more damage, which will make the fights go a little bit easier. But you really need a 3-star Varus to pull this off. As far as positioning goes, I like to give my rangers as much protection as possible, but it depends strongly who I'm facing. If I'm against a Redeem team with Belkaz or a Karma and a Dawnbringer team that's going to hit a clump of characters, then I don't want to clump up. But otherwise, it's good to keep them clumped because it keeps them safe. They have to go through the knights to get to the rangers, and the rangers are able to finish them off. Overall, for climbing, I found this a really effective build, but now it's time to move on to our next build, Knight of the Living Dead. <laughs> okay, sorry for a little more silliness, but I think you now figured out the theme of today's video. I am using knights, and this build I actually credit to my dad who gave me this idea to use knights with abomination, and it showed to be really, really effective. In fact, more effective than my Knight's Revenant build because it was more flexible and easier to get into since Knights are more readily available early in the game. In a perfect world, the RNG gods give you a clear sign and hand you a new new early on in the game, telling you, hey, it's time to go Abomination. If that happens, you just follow the same basic instructions as before. You want a healing item on Brand, you ultimately want to get the Runin's Hurricane on Callista, and you want a tanky item on Nunu. And then you're going to fill in everything else with Knights, because that is what is going to make the team a lot stronger. What I really like about this build is two things. Number one, it takes a long time for your zombie to pop out of the grave because it will not come out until two characters are down. And if you have four knights, they are going to be keeping your characters up for a while. Number two is that when the zombie pops, it is going to be getting the advantages of the knight buff. So it is going to be reducing the damage it's taking and it makes it very, very strong. I also found this build to be very easy to pivot into. This is a scene from a game in which I was actually trying to do Night Rangers, but it kept throwing Callistas and Brands at me, and I ultimately had to give up on the idea of ever getting another strong Ranger. So I backed off of that, had gotten the Fiddlesticks a lot earlier than I expected, threw the Sunfire Cape onto Fiddle, and then went into Abomination. You can see how long everyone held up with the Night Buff, and that let the zombie come out later and ultimately win this round that I was probably otherwise destined to lose. Your ultimate goal is by 8 to end up with 4 knights, 4 abominations. Now in this particular case I ended up loading items onto Callista because she was so close to gold I felt for sure I was going to get it and that she would be able to be a carry. But it almost didn't matter because again the character stayed up so long due to the knight buff that by the time the scion came out things were pretty much over. What I also found in this configuration is that you can actually use some of your Abomination Champs as a secondary carry. In this case, I had three items on the Gold Callista. Because of the Night buff and the people in front of her, she was able to stay protected for a long time, which allowed her to do damage along with Scion. That helped the team overall and enabled us to win a fight against an incredibly well-stacked Velkaz and finish off a really tanky Leona. It's now time to move on to our fourth build, and they're in no particular order. One is not better than the other. It all depends what items you get, but this one is, guess what? Knights and Cannoneers. And I found this to be very, very, very effective, provided you get the right start but it all fits together really naturally with a lot of built-in synergies that work really, really well. There are a couple of different ways to start this. You can get a clear sign from the RNG gods that, hey, look, here's a three-cost cannoneer, and oh yeah, here's a knight, and you already have a giant's belt, so uh, you might want to head in that direction. 
And sometimes this is going to be something you're going to need to sort of work into from a start. Obviously, I like having a Sunfire cape on an early night, but when I saw the chance here to pick up the third Senna, it was time to say, okay, let's give this another shot and see what happens. You don't absolutely need the three cost Cannoneer to be to start winning you can do this with two knights especially if you have a two-star knight with a sunfire cape because that is going to give you a really early advantage and early wins will help because there is a transition period in this but I mentioned some really early synergies. For example, once you have Poppy and Tristana, you're going to have the Hellion buff. Once you have Thresh and Misfortune, you're going to have the Forgotten buff. And of course, you're going to have the Knight buff as part of the build and the Cannoneer buff once you have two Cannoneers. These buffs working together will make for a very strong team early. By level six, your goal is to have four Knights out along with two Cannoneers and then as many buffs as you can work in and preferably good items on an item carrier that is going to get transferred over to Lucian once you can find him. Either Tristana or Senna will work as an item carrier. You might be sacrificing a buff for it, but if you have one that's a two star, it's probably going to be worth using that. As with a lot of these, you're going to want to save as much gold as possible until seven because your key characters are hiding there when you have a 15% chance. You're going to want to get Galio into the fold as quickly as possible because along with Lucian and Senna, that will trigger an additional Sentinel buff that will go along with the Knight, Cannoneer, Forgotten, and Hellion buff, giving you a lot of buffs moving forward. Once you find your Lucian, you get your items onto him as fast as possible. And the real key is the Last Whisper, but you need a damage item, the Last Whisper, and a healing item. It can be Hand of Justice, it can be Bloodthirster, the damage item could be Deathblade is probably the best one, or it could be an Infinity Edge. But you want to get that general combination onto Lucian quickly. For the final piece of the puzzle, you want to try to find a rail that you can put out that will pair up with Nautilus to create the Ironclad buff, again, that goes across the whole team. Between the Knights and the Ironclad, and then the Sentinel Shield with Lucian, with those items, you're going to have a pretty easy time winning fights that you don't think you'd be able to win, but you'd be surprised how quickly Lucian can gain back health when he does his ult. And I just need to show this last fight because I apologize if this is one of our viewers, but that is the Night Ranger build I am going against, and it's set up really well. They're clumped perfectly, and they really did nothing wrong. It just, they ran into this Night Cannoneer build at the wrong time. And with that, let's move on to our final build. One I like to call Team Fortress. No, not the video game. Who does graphics in this place? But anyway, silliness aside, this is actually one of my favorite builds, and not because it's better than any other, but because it is so frustrating to play against. It's just brawlers and knights and ironclad cavaliers, any tank units you can put together, and oh boy, does it work. This is a pretty easy build to try and force. You just pick up a tank character with a tank item, and then hope that you can get components that work together. Obviously, I've said it many times throughout this video, one of my favorite items early on is the Sunfire Cape, as it works really well in pretty much any situation. Whether you're starting with knights or brawlers, it doesn't really matter. The Sunfire Cape is a powerful item because it will mitigate healing from the opposing team. Here you can see it get through a group of sentinels stopping the bloodthirster and Rakan's healing, allowing us to get into the backline and finish off their Senna for an early win. If you don't get access to a Sunfire Cape early, another great item is the Dragon's Claw because it is going to do damage back to anyone who uses an ability against you. So not only is it providing magic resist, but it's also doing offensive damage when anyone uses an ability against you. As you can see, this Vladimir gets completely decimated by it. One of the things I like best about this build, especially for newer players, is you just can pick up any tanky item for any tanky character. You take your best character and find the best item you can in the moment and put it on them. The one item you probably want to build is Redemption when you can find it because it helps keep them healed. 
And while even at two times their normal speed, your fights may feel like long, slow slugfests in which you are just waiting for the other team to collapse from exhaustion, it really is worth it because you are able to power through and stay at the top of the leaderboards through most of the map. And look, I don't want to oversell it and say that this build is the solution to all of your problems. I did happen to give it to a couple of people who were struggling in some of the lower levels in Hyper Roll, and it worked really well for them because of its simplicity and its flexibility. You just pick up knights, you pick up brawlers, and then you just put together tanky items over and over again. But this build will always hold a special place in my heart because it's one of the few times this season I was actually able to come through with an absolutely 100% perfect game and win without losing a single match. And for that reason alone, it will remain my personal favorite. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer and I hope you have an absolutely awesome day.